Creating Camtasia Kinetic Text callout effects is one of my favorite things to do in Camtasia. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some fancy typing effects so that you can apply these techniques to enhance and complement the other visual media that go into your creations. As with most motion graphic features you build into your creations, be careful not to overdo it. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. Okay, we're inside Camtasia 9. Just a few quick notes before we get started. Some of the examples I'm going to show you include MOV clips, of animated paper backgrounds like this one right here. As you can see, it pops up and it has a nice animation and then it, then it disappears. These files are from a great pay asset pack that I use. That said, I'm gonna show you how to analyze these assets and then create the effect with just images that you can find free and animate yourself, just like something like this right here. And as well, another one like this right here, which was the opening sequence that you saw to the video. There are lots of options and there's lots of creativity you can apply. Let's dig deeper. In this first example, I wanted to type out a quote onto a lined piece of paper like a memo pad and add sound effects to support it. I used this MOV file, which is from an asset pack I have, and I'm just gonna play it and, and tell you a bit about it while we're looking at it. First off, you see it, it's, it, it, it grew in, it popped in, it, it has 25 seconds in length here. And that's quite a long time. So one of the, you know, the things that you need to know about working with assets like this from MOV files is that it has a predefined animation. It may have motion, sound, some footprint size and duration that you're working with, and you're going to need to adopt it, um, sorry, adapt it. So there you saw it shrunk out. So that's what we're going to be working with here in the first example. So let's play the first example, and then we're going to look at the details. So just to note a few things, you saw how when we played this, that the, the, the text came in almost in phrases. When the commas came up, there was pauses. And then the, the next phrase played where and paused at the next comma, then went through. And then there was a slight pause before giving the name of the person for the quote. And then the text fades out and it shr shrinks and disappears. So what did we do to make these elements come to play? Well, first off, the, the grow in part and the shrink out are all part of that asset that I got, the MOV file. The key thing to note here is that that file now has been shrunk from the original 25 seconds to uh, around 10 seconds. And I did that by just um, making this long enough in the end to cover how long it took for the text the way I wanted it to go on screen and play with the sound effects. And then I just sort of truncated the file and just brought back the end portion of it that had just this tiny part that has the animation exit, which is the shrink effect. And that's all built in. So I didn't have to create those animation elements that was built into this message paper. Now let's look at the first piece of text. The first piece of text, as you can see, I'm scrolling along here, ends at the first comma. And then after the first comma, uh, in comes, this is the second text box. So I'm gonna change our perspective a little here so we can see a little more, shrink things up a bit. So now we're here in the second text box and the second text box is typing and then uh, it ends at the period. And then the third text box starts to come into play here where we start, you see the typing start again and then the comma and a bit of a pause then in comes the last text box here to finish that sentence. And then above that is one last box for the author of the quote. Okay. So the reason why this was not done in one fell swoop as one um, text call out is because I wanted to have pauses. So I actually separated them, stacked them so that they could come out that way. And a cool thing to note, is that the pause we had at first was after the first comma. So when I had to do the 
second call out where it starts with the word responding. If you look at that, I actually had to put space in the beginning so that I could get that to line up and start again right in the in the right spot there. So that's just a tip that if you're going to pause things based on punctuation, that you can put spacing around what you want in the text for it to, to come out the way you're, you're planning for it to, to execute. Next, as you can see at the beginning of each text piece is a sound clip, which is um, the keyboarding sound. And the keyboarding sound goes just as long as the text goes, starts again and ends where the text ends. And if you can see that on the top piece, I, as an example, I have a very short piece, so I, cause there's only just one little spot. So you basically, uh, elongate or shorten the, the sound clip to the length of the typing that you need because it's that keyboarding typing sound. And uh, that's that's pretty simple. In addition, when I was putting the text on, I had to get a sizing for my font that would fit so that when when it got spaced, that it, it, it looked decent in, to fit in between the lines. So what you need to do always first is when you put on your background, so in this case it was the, the animated background that we have here, um, you know, set it up and then, and in my case I scaled it to 126%. You can see here so that I fit the full height of my 16 by 9 um, set up here widescreen. So once I did that then I know that when I start to play with the text I came up with um, you know, I played with the different text sizes to come up with 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 what I what I wanted to to work with, and um, you know, you're not always going to have the text in perfect uh, alignment. So sometimes you might have to adjust the sizing a bit because depending on the background and the piece of text that you're using, it it you know it may be slightly off. So for the most part, it's uh, 52 is the text size that was used here for this creation and, and that's what you worked with. Now, how did we get the cool text effect? The text effect is done with something called the re reveal behavior. And the reveal behavior, as you can see here on the right, has various parameters. So there's an in, a during, and an out. Now, when you see this, this um, curled arrow like that, it means that I've changed the value and you can revert to the default. Well, we don't want the default because I'm gonna explain why. I'm going back, which so I have the during and the out set, uh, they're both at none. So in the during phase, which is the middle phase of the animation, I had to turn it, I set it to none here. And in the out phase, it was already to none. So the only thing we're really animating here is the part that is when, when you're coming in. To, to exit, I just added a phase out transition a fade out transition, that's all. So there's no specialized animation requirement as part of the, the reveal behavior that I've added because it's handled in, in the transition through a fade, as you can see the text fade there. But what we also want to note is that, as you can see what we're doing here, is the text is going from left, left to right a character at a time, synced kind of with our, our, um, our sound of the keyboard. Now to achieve that, you need to change this type to, where it says text first to last from the default which was from right to left so if you notice that the, the default that would just not work so we needed to go back to putting in the um, text from first to last so that's one key attribute that you need to set for this to work and then as you're going through um, because uh, the keyboard has a certain speed of execution plus what you're looking at flows a certain way, I had to play with and adjust the speed. So you play with these parameters. So it was at 88 originally, and then I, I had set that up to 100, and I left the offset at 0.05, and that, that worked fine. So again, whatever you're doing, you, you know, you need to try the different type and movement options and direction. But here, for the most part, I only change the text type and the speed I increased and I left the offset. Those are the main parameters you're gonna tinker with when you're playing with the text. Now in example two, we're gonna have the same kind of animation effect we had in example one, but it was done with a free asset. I picked up this image from Pixabay, this happy message pad looking um, image from Pixabay. And when you're in Pixabay, if you look here, it says from an attribution, there's no attribution required and it's free for commercial use. Of course, you can, I guess, do the tipping through this other stuff here inside Pixabay, but, you know, always be mindful of your 
um, responsibilities for copyright, whether it's sound, music, sound effects, or images or video clips. You always got to be mindful of that stuff. So this, this image um, was now animated, but I, the text and the revealing and everything, I just copied the same part from the first set and it works the same. So all of these details around the, the keyboards, the sound effects, the text, and the revealing is all the same. The only thing that's changed is now our background, which is animated, is worked is based on that image. And we added the scale behavior here. So I want you to just see what we did here in the scale behavior on the in, there is a grow on the during, there's nothing happening, and on the out, a shrink. I literally didn't have to change anything, and this looks exactly, uh, executes exactly like the uh, the first first um, first one we did. So let me run it for you here to have a look. And one thing to note is in order to do that, I had to extend the length of the image a little longer because the timing that works for the actual shrink that happens on the out, um, you know, you can't just align this to end at the same, same time as the text exit does. It has to actually go longer so that you don't cut off the text. Likewise, the same thing applies to the beginning. The, uh, you'll see in the behavior on the in the grow it has it, you know it, it does it grows in in, in a spring fashion and then you want it to get solid before we start the typing of the text so this was extended again to the left to the left of the text where we started the text in this next example i used another free image from pixabay which was an image of this parchment paper. You notice it's totally static, and this is uh, being used for the animation that you saw at the beginning of the video, and it was fully animated. And this is what I love about Camtasia, between using the transitions and the behaviors, you can really do some amazing stuff if you have the patience and you just you know play around with things. So let's look at this a little more closely. With this particular example, you see there's a, a little sound or music track on the top. That's what kind of drove the length and what I was trying to do in terms of timing of execution. Just to let you know, the text was done with the exact same kind of reveal effect, and there was nothing in the during and the out as in the other examples and in the in it's still you know text first to last and the core thing here is that my offset is a different number it had to go up to 2.0 so that's just you know we don't need to spend time there because we've already gone through that in the previous examples but what's really cool is we went from an image again that looked like this just wide open to nicely spread out from the beginning and it, it makes it look almost like that the scroll the scroll was uh you know being rolled out and then i started the text so i played with the timing of that based on however long i wanted it to be then i started the text block as you can see with its adjusted timing and again this is all going on while the music's in the background there and then after the text finishes i needed i wanted to hold it for a little bit i created another text call out but it has only the drop shadow like like this does here for the text that's in here, but there's no animation. So I just copied the text and pasted it in so that we could have like a, a static representation. But then I added, if you see here, the transition called page roll, as I have the page roll here on the image that we have. And you see the page roll folds things back from left to right and see how nicely the text starts to roll up and then disappear out. Really cool that I was able to get this done in Camtasia. But in order to make it fully work, because if I um, didn't add this custom animation, I'm just gonna show you what, what the, uh, the outcome would have looked like. So if I cut that out, you can see here that the page roll actually has the text kind of collapsing on top of each other. So when I put that custom animation in, which I'm putting back by a control Z there, you see how I got the nice smooth result. And the secret sauce here was so that I didn't get the text to fold on top of each other. I wanted to just at the, at the end, what I've done is I used the, a crop and I cropped the image, which at the beginning of the animation was the full image, as you can see that by the box outlines. And I was in the crop feature here. And then what I did is when I got to here, I just closed the crop 
to go all the way in as tight as I could. And that created the nice effect. So I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but using something like that is very powerful. You need to keep playing and experimenting, something I do a lot of. And to finish our work with this example, I'm just going to give it one last spin and bear in mind how everything was driven by the sound that you have here. Enjoy. Wow! Typing effects where applied appropriately can add a punch of liveliness to your videos. To see more cool animated text effects tutorials in Camtasia, click the links on this page or in the video description below. And be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos to learn about video editing, video marketing, and YouTube. And thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.